So the new Galaxy Buds 2 are a great pair of entry-level, everyday carry, truly wireless earbuds that any Android user can't go wrong with. However, the Beats Studio Buds, Apple's Trojan horse to sell earbuds to Android users, are also very good. And if you're trying to choose between these two earbuds, this is actually a very tough choice. So I'm honestly very excited about this video. Now regarding pricing, both of these earbuds retail for $150, but knowing Samsung, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Galaxy Buds 2 go on sale on a regular basis. And in order to not miss out on the fun, I also expect the Beats Studio Buds to go on sale on a regular basis as well. So personally, I don't think pricing is going to be a deciding factor when it comes to choosing between these two earbuds. I expect their pricing to be in lockstep. But nonetheless, if you want to pick either of these two earbuds, Buds up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to learn more about either of these two earbuds, please watch their full reviews because we're only going to be going over their main differences. Now, first, let's talk about these cases because they are very different. Size wise, both of these cases are fine and they aren't too noticeable when they're in your pocket. However, the Galaxy Buds case does have a smaller footprint than the Studio Buds case. But the Studio Buds case is a little thinner. But overall, when it comes to pocketability, personally, I do find the Galaxy Buds case to be less noticeable in my pocket than the Studio Buds case. However, I do want to point out that I really like the strong magnets found in the Studio Buds case. It just makes taking your earbuds out and putting them back in feel much more secure. Whereas with the Galaxy Buds weaker magnets, you gotta be a little more careful or else you might drop your earbuds. Now, when it comes to charging these cases, they both charge via a USB-C port because these earbuds are meant for Android users. However, the main difference here is that the Galaxy Buds 2's case has wireless charging, whereas the Studio Buds just don't. Now, personally, I don't really care about wireless charging on my earbuds, but I do want to point it out either for the people that have a phone that supports power sharing or if you've already invested in multiple wireless charging mats. But now let's talk about battery life. The Galaxy Buds 2 do manage to edge out the Studio Buds here. With their active noise cancellation turned off, the Galaxy Buds 2 have an advertised combined battery life of 29 hours. The earbuds themselves can go for 7.5 straight hours and the case can supply about 3 additional full charges. Whereas with the Studio Buds, they have an advertised combined battery life of 24 hours. The earbuds themselves can go for 8 straight hours, but the case can only supply 2 additional charges. But with their active noise cancellation turned on, the Galaxy Buds 2 have an advertised combined battery life of 20 hours. The earbuds themselves can go for 5 straight hours and the case can supply those 3 additional charges. Whereas with the Studio Buds, they have an advertised combined battery life of 15 hours. The earbuds themselves can go for 5 straight hours as well, but their case can only supply those 2 additional charges. So overall, the Galaxy Buds 2 do manage to edge out the Studio Buds here, which I do feel is rather impressive because they do have the slightly smaller case here with wireless charging. But now let's talk about the earbuds themselves. When it comes to fit, even though both of these earbuds are in your -ear earbuds, they do fit a little differently from one another. The Galaxy Buds 2 fit like your standard pair of in-ear earbuds, as in they go into your ear canal a decent amount. Whereas with the Studio Buds, they're a little more shallow fitting, making them feel slightly less intrusive than the Galaxy Buds 2. Now, even though I do find the Studio Buds to be a little more comfortable than the Galaxy Buds, the Studio Buds do like to wiggle out a little more than the Galaxy Buds. Nonetheless, both of these earbuds fit fine, but personally, I would only recommend these earbuds for casual use. Neither of these earbuds would be great for working out because they do like to wiggle out. But now let's talk about connectivity on these earbuds. On both of these earbuds, each earbud establishes a connection with your phone. So if you just want to use one earbud at a time, you can use either one. It doesn't matter. And this is the connection setup that we expect to see from our earbuds nowadays. However, if you're a Samsung power user, you're going to be able to hot swap between all of your Samsung devices with the Galaxy Buds 2 thanks to seamless earbud connection. Whereas with the Studio Buds, they can only be connected to one device at a time. However, with both of these earbuds, they're both good for power users who might have different devices from different ecosystems. Like take me for example, I use an iPhone and a Pixel device, and switching from one device to another is relatively easy. All you gotta do is just go into your device's Bluetooth menu and establish a new connection, and the earbuds will automatically switch. 
But when it comes to performance, both of these earbuds have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. And when it comes to audio codecs, both of these earbuds have support for SBC and AAC, which is uh, pretty standard for earbuds in this price range. But now let's talk about actually listening to music with these earbuds. Now, both of these earbuds sound great for entry-level earbuds. Now, personally, I think the Galaxy Buds sound best when they're set to their dynamic EQ, because out of the box, these earbuds can sound a little bright. However, overall, I do prefer how the Studio Buds sound over the Galaxy Buds 2. With the Studio Buds, these earbuds sound more open and their bass resonates much more, leading to a much more dynamic and, simply put, more fun listening experience. Whereas with the Galaxy Buds 2, they just don't sound as open and even though their bass does resonate a good amount when they're set to their dynamic EQ, it's nowhere near as dramatic as the Studio Buds. Now, one thing the Galaxy Buds have over the Studio Buds is that you can choose from a few different preset EQ settings. Whereas with the Studio Buds, their app doesn't allow you to directly change their EQ. But nonetheless, I think the Studio Buds sound great just the way they are. However, if you prefer a brighter or more neutral EQ, then you might want to go with the Galaxy Buds 2. But now I want to quickly address these earbuds app. Now the Studio Buds play nice with both iPhone and Android. You're able to toggle between your ANC settings and you can adjust the layout of your media controls. Whereas with the Galaxy Buds, they only connect to Samsung's Wear app if you're using an Android device. If you try to use the Galaxy Buds 2 with an iPhone, you're simply not going to be able to get the most out of these earbuds. You won't be able to update them, you won't be able to change their EQ, and you won't be able to adjust their media controls. And now, speaking of media controls, this could actually be a deciding factor for some people. The Studio Buds are using physical buttons, whereas the Galaxy Buds are using touchpads. Now, the touchpads on the Galaxy Buds are very accurate and they're easy enough to use. However, these touchpads don't do the best of jobs of rejecting inputs when you're just readjusting these earbuds. So for that reason, and just tactile feedback, some people just prefer physical buttons on their earbuds. However, with the Galaxy Buds, if you turn on their tap the edge feature, you do get more control over your medium directly from the earbuds themselves over the Studio Buds. So the touchpads on the Galaxy Buds 2 do have their pros and cons. Now, when it comes to always listening voice assistants, the Galaxy Buds 2 have support for Bigsby, which really only applies if you're a Galaxy user, whereas the Studio Buds have support for Siri. But given that the Studio Buds are mainly meant for Android users, I don't think that matters too much. Nonetheless, neither of these earbuds have support for Hey Google, but you can always activate your voice assistant of choice by just pressing and holding on your earbud. But now I want to address a pet peeve that I have about both of these earbuds. The Studio Buds just flat out don't have proximity sensors, so they won't automatically pause your music when you take them out of your ears like let's say AirPods do. And personally, I do feel that this is a noticeable inconvenience, especially given their price range. Whereas with the Galaxy Buds 2, they clearly have proximity sensors, but they don't pause your music if you take one earbud out of your ear, like with most other earbuds. You gotta take both of these earbuds out. And unfortunately, there's no way to fix this through their app. So Samsung, can we please just fix this through a future software update? But now let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these earbuds. Now, given that these are both entry-level ANC earbuds, don't expect them to block out as much noise as the big boys. But when it comes to ranking, there are the Sony WF-1000XM4s, which block out a ton of noise. But granted, they do have an advantage because of their itchy foam ear tips. Below them are the Jabberly 85Ts, which also block out a ton of noise while being more comfortable. So personally, I do prefer them. Below them are the AirPods Pro and Sennheiser Momentum 2s, which I feel are neck and neck. And below them are the Galaxy Buds Pro. Now, below the Galaxy Buds Pro are the Beat Studio Buds, below the Beat Studio Buds are the Galaxy Buds 2, and below them are the Galaxy Buds Live, which don't block out a ton of noise just given how they fit, but that's a story for a different video. Nonetheless, both the Galaxy Buds 2 and Beat Studio Buds mainly only block out cost and low frequency sounds, but the Studio Buds do block out a little more noise than the Galaxy Buds 2. 
But like I mentioned in the past, I only use the active noise cancellation on my earbuds when I have to. And what's really important to me is the quality of their ambient mode. Now, the ambient mode on both of these earbuds is very similar. They both sound fairly natural with zero hissing in the background. However, the Beat Studio Buds do do a slightly better job of rejecting wind noise when walking outdoors. However, I do have to point out that with the Galaxy Buds, you do have more control over how their ambient mode sounds. Now, I think the ambient mode on the Studio Buds sounds fine just the way it is, but the Galaxy Buds give you options. But finally, I do have to point out that the ambient mode on both of these earbuds let in everything. It isn't the active kind like the ambient mode that you'll find on the Sony WF-1000XM4s, which will automatically turn off their ambient mode if there's a sudden spike in loud noise, like let's say a siren rolling by, just saving your ears from getting blasted. But finally, here's the microphone test. Now, both of these earbuds have decent sounding microphones. However, the Galaxy Buds 2 do manage to edge out the Studio Buds here. In a quiet room, both of these earbuds sound fine, but the Galaxy Buds 2 do have a little bit more amplification to them. But the real difference is when it comes to blocking out noise pollution, because right now the Galaxy Buds 2 are doing a great job of reducing this road noise and focusing on just my voice. Because for comparison's sake, if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're going to clearly hear all of this road noise. But if we were to switch back over to the Galaxy Buds 2, it is severely reduced. Whereas with the Studio Buds, you do hear a noticeable amount of road noise in the background, and when I talk, there is a little bit of static in the background. And when it comes to blocking out chatter, it's the same thing. You can hear a noticeable amount of noise pollution in the background, and there is a little bit of interference when I'm talking. Whereas with the Galaxy Buds 2, they do a slightly better job of blocking out chatter and amplifying my voice. Now, it might sound a little robotic, but you can definitely still understand it. So overall, both of these earbuds have decent sounding microphones for phone calls. But with the Studio Buds, they are better used when in a quieter environment. Whereas with the Galaxy Buds 2, you can get away with a little bit of noise pollution. So with all that being said, I think you can't go wrong with either of these earbuds if you're an Android user. And honestly, I can't say that one is definitively better than the other. The Galaxy Buds 2 have the better battery life, the slightly smaller case with wireless charging. You have more control over your media directly from the earbuds themselves. They have a slightly better performing microphone for phone calls, and they have more customization options. But the Studio Buds sound better. They block out a little more noise. They have a slightly better ambient mode i think they fit better and they have physical media controls which could be a deciding factor for some people personally i am leaning a little more towards the studio buds because of how they sound but the galaxy buds 2 are great as well if you made it this far i guess you enjoyed the video so hit that like button and get subscribed it helps out more than you realize if you want to pick any other products up mentioned in this video those will be linked in the description down below and you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store but other than that i'll catch you next time